From engineering catastrophes to financial fiascos, these stories remind us that even the most well-funded projects are not immune to the twists and turns of fate. Join me for today's video. We're going to count down the top 15 most expensive fails in history. Starting with number 15, New Coke. Companies will often attempt to rebrand or reposition themselves within a market to boost their sales, but there's no guarantee that it will work. And in the mid-1980s, the world-leading soft drinks company Coca-Cola found out that people preferred them just the way that they were. At the time, they were seeing their market shares fall because of competition from a number of other companies, in particular Pepsi, which was outselling Coke in supermarkets. In taste tests, it appeared as if people preferred Pepsi's sweeter taste, so in 1985, Coca-Cola developed a new recipe. In taste tests and focus groups, this new version outperformed Pepsi and the original Coca-Cola recipe, and it was so popular that one bottling plant even threatened to sue Coke if they didn't go forward with releasing it. Instead of just offering it as a new variety, it replaced the original recipe and was sold as New Coke, and it was first seen as a resounding success. The company soon began receiving tens of thousands of complaints, and calls to the customer service hotline increased by more than 300%. A class action lawsuit was filed against the company and international markets refused to sell this new recipe. And Pepsi jumped on the opportunity with a new ad campaign that highlighted the changes that had been made. After initially seeing a stock price rise, it began to plummet. And just 79 days after releasing the product, the company re-released the old recipe as Coca-Cola Classic. They had reportedly lost the equivalent of hundreds of millions of dollars, but it worked out well for them in the long term. Sales of the classic version skyrocketed and grew at a much faster pace than Pepsi. So much so that there's been some suggestions that the new Coke project was just a scheme to make this happen all along. Number 14. Boston's 2024 Olympic Bid it's a well-known fact that hosting an Olympic Games can cost many billions of dollars and often requires the construction of sports facilities that lay abandoned just a few years after the event's been held. But at least the host cities will have something to look back on. The bidding process itself can be a costly affair, and while you may not know that Paris will be holding the Olympics in 2024, did you know that there was a time when Boston was trying for it? With a proposal submitted in late 2014, the city was chosen as the United States Olympic Committee's selection in early 2015, with the final decision due to be made by the IOC in 2017. Plans were put into place to raise the more than $12 billion it was expected to cost, and designs were drawn up for a new 60,000-seat stadium, a velodrome, and an aquatic center. Extensive surveys were commissioned to decide which land needed to be purchased for the developments, the new transportation infrastructure that was needed, and to more precisely predict the cost involved. But from the start, the organizers were met with a great deal of opposition from local resident groups. By the end of 2015, it was agreed that the bid should be withdrawn, without even having been fully submitted to the IOC. And of course, by this time, a huge amount had already been spent. Accounts showed that they had spent at least $20 million, and that the commission was $4 million in debt by the time they pulled the plug, money that would have surely been better invested directly into the city. Number 13. The Isaac Peril Submarine For most countries in the world, the development of a new class of sub is something that's celebrated to show off their new militaristic capability. But in 2013, Spain's new addition to the fleet became somewhat of an embarrassment. Known as the S-80 Plus class, or the Isaac Peral class, it was designed and built by a private Spanish company for the Navy, with four being ordered and paid for up front at a cost of more than $4.5 billion, hailed as utilizing the latest technologies and designs, which would make it a true force to be reckoned with. Spanish officials believed the subs would help them become one of the most dominant naval forces in the world. In 2013, however, just as the first was about to be delivered, a huge problem was discovered. Due to a design flaw, there was a weight imbalance in the sub that meant that once it had submerged, it was unable to surface again on its own, something that most people would agree is fairly vital for a sub to be able to do. Fortunately, the designers were able to come up with a fix. They had to extend the sub by a further 23 feet to increase the buoyancy enough for it to function properly. Not only did this redesign delay the project by six years, it also increased the cost by millions of dollars and even required the Navy to redevelop the ports that had been built for the subs because they were no longer big enough for them to sail into. Number 12. The Samsung Galaxy Note 7 
Smartphones are one of the most must-have gadgets of all, allowing us to keep connected virtually wherever we go. The market for them is therefore one of the most competitive too, with a number of companies vying for their share of the more than 1.5 billion units that are sold each year. Of course, this means that the leading companies are always trying to include the most impressive features by pushing technology to the limits, and while this often pays off, there have been some notable times when things have backfired. Probably the most famous of these was the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, which was a phablet that was designed by the company and revealed in August of 2016. Featuring a number of elements that Samsung hoped would make it the market leader, it went on sale later that month and was met with positive reviews. At first, it would, though, be discontinued within just a couple of months after customers began noticing their devices were overheating. In the rush to bring it out, Samsung had failed to notice a manufacturing defect in the batteries that could cause them to overheat and, in some cases, explode. At first, they replaced the devices that developed these problems, but even the replacements suffered from the same issue too, and it got so bad that airlines even banned them from being taken on board because of the risk. Samsung was forced to issue a recall, and the failed release of the phablet is thought to have cost the company at least $17 billion from direct costs and reputational damage. Needless to say, they're now much more careful with every device they release, so something like this can't ever happen again. Number 11. SNCF Trains as the most visited country for tourism in the world, and with a population of almost 70 million people, France's railways are some of the busiest on the planet, and the nation's economy relies on it working effectively. This has led to it being one of the most heavily invested public transportation networks on Earth, and they're at the forefront of modern rail design. And while this normally means it's surprisingly easy to travel around the country, any mistakes in the planning stages would lead to huge costly problems further down the line. This is exactly what the rail operator, the SNCF, found in 2014. The company had made an order for 2,000 new trains at a cost of $20.5 billion and provided the manufacturing company with all the details for how long and wide the trains needed to be to operate on the network. But they had made a huge oversight in collecting this data. They only measured the stations built within the last 30 years. They soon realized that some of the older stations had a much narrower space between the track and the platforms, and this meant that the new trains wouldn't be able to pass through. Rather than changing the trains, which by the time the mistake was noticed had already been built, they were left with no option other than to alter more than a thousand platforms across the country. At a cost of at least $60,000 per platform, the full cost of rectifying the mistake is still not known but it's believed to have been in excess of $100 million. Oops. Number 10. The Ever Given The Suez Canal is one of the most important shipping routes in the world. Connecting the Mediterranean with the Red Sea, it allows vessels to avoid having to sail all the way around Africa and significantly shortens travel times. With cargo ships getting bigger and bigger, though, there have long been questions about whether the canal itself needs to be widened, and the first example of the mayhem that can be caused by an incident was seen in March of 2021. The Ever Given, a 1,300-foot-long container ship that's operated by Ever Green, was being piloted through the canal when a strong gust of wind caused it to become wedged across the entire width of the waterway, blocking all traffic. Within five days, 369 ships had joined a queue to pass, which represented more than $9.5 billion worth of trade, and the costs kept escalating. It took six days to finally refloat the ship and take it to an inspection yard where it was impounded, and it was only released back to the company after a fine was paid, something that's believed to have been in the billions. The knock-on effect for the world's economy was probably the most expensive part of this mistake, though, as it was blamed for increasing shipping costs and times which led to higher costs for goods, particularly across Europe, at a time when the economies were already suffering because of the COVID pandemic. Number 9. The Walkie Talkie Building Like all other world-leading cities, London has seen a number of unusual buildings being added to its skyline in recent times, with one of the most famous, at least because of the issues it caused, being located at 20 Fenchurch Street. Affectionately known as the Walkie Talkie Building because of its less-than-traditional shape, it originally won a series of awards for being the worst design construction of the year, and was described as being bloated, inelegant, and thuggish, and not fitting in with its surroundings at all. 
Far from being just a blight, though, this shape unexpectedly caused two side effects that would eventually lead to redesigns that would cost several millions of dollars. The first was that because of the way it channeled air around it, it significantly increased the wind strength at street level and caused chaos, particularly on stormy days. The second side effect, though, was the most serious and was even more of a problem for locals as the curved windows happened to reflect the sun's rays back down towards the street and caused temperatures of up to 240 degrees Fahrenheit or 117 degrees Celsius in some places. The pavement and cars didn't stand a chance and would melt on hot days, with the developers having to pay compensation to numerous victims of these heat beams. Eventually, they had to install an awning around the structure to stop the solar glare, making the whole thing look even more unsightly. But thankfully, it's far less likely to burn you as you walk past it. Number 8. Lake Peñur If you see Louisiana's Lake Peñur today, you wouldn't think there's anything too unusual about it, other than the fact that at more than 200 feet deep at places, it's the deepest lake in the state. The surprising thing, though, is that it hasn't always been that way, and until 1980, it had a maximum depth of just 10 feet. Things took a catastrophic turn in the year when Texaco Oil Company performed some drilling works in the lake bed to explore for new deposits. It had to be an extremely precise operation because at a depth of 1,300 feet beneath the lake, there were tunnels of salt mines. Someone made a major miscalculation, and the drill bit managed to puncture the top of one of the tunnels. The mining rig, along with 11 barges and several other boats, were sucked into the whirlpool into the hole that quickly developed, which caused a loss of tens of millions of dollars worth of equipment. This wasn't the worst consequence, though, because not only was the mine completely flooded, but an enormous hole opened up further along that actually sucked water back from the ocean into it and temporarily created the largest waterfall ever seen in Louisiana. The water pressure caused geysers to form in the mine shafts that were up to 400 feet high. The lake had filled with salt water, which killed the entire freshwater fish stock, and once things settled, the debris of nine barges popped back up to the surface. Now, amazingly, no one was killed in the incident, but because of the extreme damage that was caused, Texaco ended up having to pay out more than $45 million in damages to the owners of the mine and several businesses in the nearby area. Moving on to number 7, Ciudad Real Central Airport, Spain. Airports are an important part of a region's ability to connect with the rest of the world for both trade and passenger transport, and they represent a significant investment before they're able to begin operations. You'd think, then, that planners would be absolutely certain that any new airport already has a huge demand before the workmen even began to prepare the site, but that's not necessarily always the case. Spain's Ciudad Real Central Airport was meant to completely change the fortunes of the area just to the south of the municipality of Ciudad Real, and with a cost of 1.1 billion euros, which is about the equivalent to 1.3 billion US dollars, it was ready to open in 2009 with one of the longest runways in Europe. Its design ensured it would be able to welcome the largest passenger and cargo planes, with the terminals that could handle more than 2 million people and 47,000 tons of goods per year. The only problem was that very few airlines actually wanted to use it. There were a number of factors that led to this problem, such as its construction near a protected wildlife zone that delayed its completion by four years, and an upgrade at the main airport of Madrid that significantly increased its capacity and was far more appealing to carriers. Connections with the surrounding area, such as a planned high-speed rail line, also failed to materialize. All this led to the operating company entering receivership within just three years. The airport closed in 2012 and only reopened again in 2019, although as a private airfield and with nowhere near the usage that it was originally intended to cater to. Number 6. The Littoral Combat Ship With the continued need to invest in the development of weaponry and vessels for the modern age, the Navy hasn't always got things right. Conceived in the late 1990s, the Littoral Combat Ship, which was to be a new type of corvette, was meant to be networked, agile, and stealthy. Featuring a flight deck and a hangar for two helicopters, a stern ramp to operate small boats, and enough cargo volume to carry a small assault force, there were two main variants, one of which was a monohull design and the other being a trimaran. 
In around 20 years, the Navy spent more than $30 billion on the project, and while it was meant to result in a larger number of them being built, only 35 of the 400-foot-long vessels were completed. Numerous issues were found with them, such as lacking the manpower and firepower to complete the missions they were designed for, and being particularly vulnerable to tactical aircraft and anti-ship missiles, which meant that all they would actually be used for was fighting small ships that weren't equipped with advanced weaponry. Despite having entered service, the literal combat ships have been used for little more than war games and combat training, and in an effort to save costs, the decision was made to begin dismantling and salvaging them with the oldest one only first setting sail as recently as 2008. Seven of them have already been decommissioned, and it's likely that the remaining ones will be by 2025 at the latest. The project has been one of the most costly failures in the Navy's history, and one that's raised serious questions about any other concepts that are currently in development to replace some of the aging fleet. Number 5. The Rusky Bridge, Russia the natural landscape provides a number of obstacles that prevent us from being able to travel the shortest distances between locations, but with many of these hurdles, it is possible to build a bridge or a tunnel if the investment is worthwhile. Bridges, in particular, can be extremely expensive to construct, so the planners behind them usually have to justify this by proving they'll be used. Something that isn't exactly the case with the world's longest cable-stayed bridge, the Rusky Bridge in Russia. It's in the city of Vladivostok and connects Rusky Island with the mainland. At 3,622 feet long, it was completed in the summer of 2012, in time for the 2012 Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Conference that was taking place on Rusky Island later that year. At an estimated cost of $1.1 billion, the four-lane bridge required huge piles to be driven 250 feet into the ground to keep it stable, and the result was a crossing that could accommodate 50,000 cars per day. It was a roaring success for the conference, but its worth has since come into question, considering the fact that Rusky Island only has a population of around 5,000 people, which is a tenth of the bridge's daily capacity. Furthermore, the road leading from the bridge on the island led to a dead end just a short distance inland, and while the roads on the island have now been expanded, the entire project, somewhat unsurprisingly, remains one of the most underutilized bridges anywhere on Earth, and the perfect example of a hugely expensive vanity project that hardly benefits anyone. Number 4. Restoring the Ece Omo Fresco Churches around the world are adorned with incredibly historical artworks that depict events from the Bible and religiously important people. Those in Italy and Spain are particularly renowned for their beauty and their impressive paintings, but as with all art, the pigments can begin to fade or change over time, and at some point, careful restoration may be needed. The Ece Omo fresco was painted on one of the walls of the Sanctuary of Mercy Church in Spain in 1930 by Elias Garcia Martinez, who was at the time a professor at the School of Art of Zaragoza, and just as he finished it said, it was the result of two hours of devotion to the Virgin of Mercy. Depicting Jesus wearing a crown of thorns, it was seen as a typical example of Catholic art from the time, and in many ways, unremarkable. It did, though, become famous around the world in 2012, after it had fallen to a state of disrepair. The artist's family still lived in the town and had been involved in a fundraiser to be able to attempt a restoration, but by the time they had enough, they realized that someone had already attempted to fix it. At first, it was believed that the fresco had been vandalized, but it soon became clear that an 81-year-old parishioner had become upset at seeing how the paint was flaking and had decided to revert it to its former glory. She had apparently only done some initial preparation work before going on vacation for two weeks and had intended to finish it when she had returned. By that time, though, images of the questionable work had already been shared around the world and became famous for all the wrong reasons. The estimated cost of fixing the damage ran into the hundreds of thousands of euros, but there was a happy ending to the story. Having gained such attention, it's thought that as many as 130,000 people traveled to the church in the following months, many of whom made donations, and more than 100,000 euros has been raised that's been used to help the local charities. Number 3. The Mars Climate Orbiter 
While it may not be the closest planet to Earth, that's an honor that goes to either Venus or Mercury depending on the way you measure it, Mars is the place that the vast majority of research in our solar system is directed to because it is the one planet that has the highest chance of one day being able to support a human colony. Over the past few decades, a large number of probes and landers have been sent to the red planet, and even if everything goes right, it is an astonishing achievement to reach the target. There was one attempt, however, that failed not because of an unfortunate event, but was doomed to fail before it had even been loaded onto the rocket. The Mars Climate Orbiter was a probe that was launched in December of 1998 on a mission to be inserted into Martian orbit and study the planet's climate, atmosphere, and surface changes, as well as acting as a communications relay for landers on the surface. Everything seemed to be going to plan, but almost a year later when the orbital insertion maneuvers began in September of 1999, everything went quiet. The probe went behind Mars 49 seconds earlier than expected and never re-established contact. Quite what happened to it, whether it burnt up in Mars's atmosphere or was thrown into outer space, isn't known. But in the following investigation, NASA scientists found out what had gone wrong, and it was all a result of an embarrassingly simple oversight. Two teams had been involved in building the probe, one at NASA and one at Lockheed Martin. What no one realized at the time, though, was that the engineers at Lockheed Martin had been making calculations in pounds and feet, while those at NASA were using kilograms and meters. Without accounting for these differences, the measurements of the impulse produced when the thrusters fired were wrong by a factor of 4.4, meaning the $327 million project was never going to succeed. Number 2. Alitalia's Ticket Deal we now purchase so much online that companies have to be incredibly careful about the prices that they advertise, just in case something goes wrong. Occasionally, you'll hear stories of this where companies have made a mistake and will usually cancel as many orders as they can before the products ship. In the earlier days of online purchasing, though, companies weren't as equipped to deal with issues as they are now, and this led to a particularly embarrassing moment for Alitalia. The now-defunct airline, which was once the national carrier of Italy, still had a rather primitive online booking system in 2006, and customers couldn't believe their eyes when they logged on and found return flights from Toronto to Cyprus being sold for $33. There had, of course, been an error that resulted in two zeros being dropped from the price, which should have been $3,300. But by the time the airline realized, 509 people had already booked their flights. With some not even knowing where Cyprus even is, but excited to take advantage of such an offer, the airline eventually decided to honor the tickets, thinking there would have been too much of a legal case against them if they didn't. The error ultimately cost them more than $1.6 million, which is no small sum even for an airline. Amazingly, Alitalia had only turned a profit in one year since it had been founded in 1946, and this error was just indicative of far deeper problems within the organization. Within three years after this happened, the government had sold it off to private investors, and 11 years after that, it had gone bankrupt. Number 1. Mariner 1 in the 1950s and 60s, the space race between the US and the Soviet Union was fought on many fronts, from trying to be the first to send satellites into space to the first probe to reach the moon. The Soviets won both of these, and everyone's attention then turned to sending a probe further afield, with Venus being the logical next target. With so much more distance between it and Earth, there are only certain times that an attempt could be launched, and NASA had set its sight on a date in 1962, despite the Soviets successfully sending a probe the previous year, but one that had failed soon after reaching the planet. This left the opportunity open for NASA to gather far more data than the Soviets and to be able to claim a victory from that. Known as Mariner 1, the American design was conceived and built by the Jet Propulsion Lab that's now owned by NASA, with the main requirements being that it needed to be able to transmit data across a distance of more than 26 million miles, and to be able to withstand more than double the amount of solar radiation that is experienced in Earth's orbit. With a launch scheduled for the morning of July 21, 1962, it was delayed less than two hours ahead of time, and instead rescheduled from Pad 12 on the morning of the 22nd. Almost immediately after launch, though, it began drifting off its planned trajectory, and just 295 seconds after launching, the range safety officer ordered it for it to detonate to prevent any risk of it damaging anything downrange. 
It was a costly failure for NASA, both financially and reputationally, and one that was made all the worse when they found out what had gone wrong. The cause of the drift was a coding mistake, whereby a single hyphen had been missed out that in combination with the hardware fault meant that it was unable to reorient itself in the way that it should have done. I'll see you guys next time. Watch our binge watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge. Thank you to our channel members.